All right, today I want to talk about another ES6 feature called template strings or template literals. Uh, well, first, before we get into the actual syntax of how we do this, I want to talk about what the problem is that these template literals are trying to solve. So I have an example file here where um, I've done my usual shortcut to console.log because I use console.log so often in these examples. I have a bunch of variables here with uh, most of them strings and one of them with an array. And when you are building up strings to output, whether it's outputting them into HTML or just outputting them in the console, we run into issues where we have to escape single quotes and double quotes. So I'm writing the string, I'm going to the store, and I decided to use single quotation marks around it, which is what I normally use. But because of that, when I reach an apostrophe, I've got to use the backslash character here to escape this one. Same problem happens if you're using double quotes and you get to a sentence where you want to use quotation marks around something in the sentence. So here I wanted to put the quotation marks around, that's what she said. And because of that, I had to escape both of them. I had to put the backslash in front of those so that these would get output. So if I write out message or I log message one, we can see that these two strings will, there we go. So I get the single quotation mark here, I get the double quotation marks here. So we'd like to get away from having to escape the quotation marks regardless of one. And there's going to be occasions where you're going to have both single and double quotation marks in the string that you're trying to output. So we want to try and avoid that if we can. The other issue is, and, and these aren't major issues, it's just it's more of a, an inconvenience. If you're writing out a sentence and you want to put variables inside of that, to be able to put variables inside, we have to concatenate the string. So we take the first part of the string, and then a plus, and then we take the variable, and then another plus, and then the rest of the string. Or, alternatively, we can look at this as starting with an empty string, and we're concatenating onto it the first part, the second part, the third part. So this is typically what I would do in a situation like that problem is, as we're going to see a little bit later, sometimes you want to be able to rearrange the order of your strings and your variables. So multilingual sites, this is something that you may run into. And I just have another example here where I've got an array and then I'm accessing something from the array inside of this string. So if I were to output number two and three, we can see exact same result from those two, just the two different ways of doing it, one concatenating with the plus sign, one concatenating with the string concat method, and then message four, there it is, the first letter is A, so we were reaching into the array and grabbing the very first item. All right, so that's the the problem that we're trying to solve, is having to break things up and use an explicit order and have to start and stop our string as we're going without being able to just put a variable inside of here, like this. What we want to be able to do is say, you know what, this thing's a variable. There's got to be a way for me to indicate that this is a variable without starting and stopping my string. So, back to where that was. In comes template strings as the solution to this problem. So a template string is the ability to use the backtick character. So instead of a single quote or a double quote, we use a backtick character. And then the string that we place in between the first and second backtick characters, this is going to be strings and variables. And we have to denote the variables in a special way, but let's give this a try. Let's try doing this expression right here. I'm going to buy blank at the store. So I'm, and I don't have to escape the single quote because I'm using the backticks there, it's not the same one. 
going to buy item at the store. So there's my general line. And the way that I denote this as a variable is this. This is the powerful part of template strings. Inside these curly braces, I can put variables or I can put JavaScript expressions. So we can take variables and we can do anything we want to them. This is a string. So there we go. I have a JavaScript expression inside of here. Item to uppercase. I'm converting that item to uppercase. And then if I log this out, there we are. It took the value of the variable Heineken and we ran this function on it. And you know we could do other things to it as well. It's an expression. Like any other JavaScript expression, we can put anything we want. If I needed to put a ternary operator inside of here, I could. But this is the power of template strings. We use the backtick character so that we can use single and double quotes inside the string, which are very common. If you ever did need to put a backtick character for some reason inside of here, you can put a backtick. You just escape it the way you would a single or a double quote. Um, it's just we don't use those as commonly, so it makes this a little bit more um, friendly to the developer. Your expression goes inside the curly braces. And that's really, that's the majority of what you're going to be doing with template strings. It's just this. Now there is one other thing with template strings, and that's tagged template literals. Let's say I have a function called Bubba. This function becomes my tag for a template literal. So let me do an example here to explain this. Okay. Here's my tag in front of my template literal. What this means is call the function Bubba and send the contents of this up to this function. This function will receive an array. You can call this whatever you want. It can call, be called ABC if you want. It doesn't really matter, but I'm using strings to explain what it is. This is an array of every possible string that's inside of here. Now, there's a little funny thing with the numbers in here. Uh, right now, you can see I don't have anything inside there, but this will still be counted as one string. There is one empty string inside of here. If I put a variable inside of here, I'm going to have a string before it and a string after it. They might both be empty, but they will automatically be there. And then every one of the expressions that you put inside of here, like I only used one expression right here, you can have multiple expressions inside the same template string. These will be so ex1, ex2, ex3, and if you know how many there are, you can list off all of these arguments. Or, thanks to ES6, we can use a spread operator. So my spread operator will take everything else that's passed into here. So every single one of the template expressions here, and they'll be put into this. So this will become an array of all the expressions that are used inside of here. This is an array of all the strings. This is an array of all the expressions. So if I were to log strings.length, and log out expressions.length. And then my function, it needs to return something, so we have something coming back to here. Typically, it's some sort of um, 
combination of the strings and the expressions. So I create this, and then this could be my multilingual function. So I know that, oh, if I'm doing this in French or if I'm doing this in Russian or German, that I need to swap the word order of the different values or the strings. And you can rearrange them and return that. So I could have an English tag, a French tag, a German tag, and then do the multilingual um, variations on that. So inside here, we'll just say, uh, thanks for playing tag template liberals. Okay, run this again. Going to buy Heineken to the store. That was our message right here. And then we're going to get the two console logs inside of Bubba. When Bubba is run, the tag function is run. I'll get these two. And you can see I'm getting one is this value and zero is this. There were no expressions, but there was one string. If I were to put an expression in here, let's take our variable item from up above. And that's the only thing I have inside here, is I've just taken this item. You can see there's no space here, no space here. If I run this again, two and one. There are two strings. So on either side, between the expression and the backtick character, it counts this as a string, and it counts this as a string. They're both empty strings, there's nothing in them, but they are there nonetheless. And this would be my variable. So we could, inside of here, say that we want to take expressions number zero. And there it is. Heineken was tacked on to the end because that was the value inside of item as defined up here. If we put string x space space x. Here's my string now. And instead of all this, I'm going to say that I'm going to return strings number one and then strings number zero and then expressions number one. So we'll see what we get. There we go. So this was string one, which was the one at the end, the space and then the x, followed by string zero, which was the x and the space, followed by expression zero, which was the value of this Heineken. All right, so that's template strings. That's tag template literals, which is um, a very specific use if you need to rearrange the order of the strings and the expressions that you're evaluating. Um, in my mind, multilingual operations is probably the most common uh, place where you're going to use something like this. Otherwise, it will just be doing things like this, constructing your sentence out of variables or expressions, things that you do to those variables. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the comments.